Welcome to the Priority Report. My name is Penny Zanker. Today we're going to talk about decision fatigue and how to avoid it. Let's start by understanding some studies that were done by Dr. Roy Baumeister at Case Western Reserve University. They did a number of studies which determined that the number of decisions that need to be made was very much like willpower, where they say we have an exhaustive reserve. So at some point, we exhaust that mental energy and we're in a less capable place to make decisions. And when that happens, then we're more likely to make one of two negative decisions, or let's call them unproductive decisions. One, we avoid making the decision altogether. And two, we choose the simplest decision or the easiest decision, which isn't always the best decision for the situation. So we wanna bring this into our heightened awareness and we want to uh, take a look at what are measures that we can do in order to reduce this decision fatigue. But before we do that, I wanted to name one of the studies that they did where they worked with judges and looking at the cases of where they were offering parole and when they weren't offering parole. And it was interesting that they found that 70% of the time they were more likely to offer parole in the morning than they were in the afternoon cases. And that was one of the examples and they studied many different disciplines. It was one of the examples that helped them to better understand decision fatigue and its impact on our decision-making and the quality of our decision-making. So let's look at three ways that we can avoid decision fatigue. Number one is we want to uh, pre-decide some things and that would be sort of eliminating decisions that need to be made in the moment. So for instance, Steve Jobs, he had a regular uniform, a black turtleneck and jeans. And therefore he could eliminate, he pre-decided, eliminated a decision that he needed to make every day about what he was going to wear. It may seem very simple and simplistic but it works. If you've pre-decided what you're going to eat for the next day, it reduces the number of decisions that you have to make and it frees up your brain power to focus on the most important decisions. That's why planning is so important in your decision-making process. So that's one thing is to pre-decide. Number two is to simplify the decision-making process. And that means if there's 10 choices, how do you quickly reduce them down to two so you can decide between A or B? It makes it much easier to decide and takes less mental energy to decide between A and B as it does to decide between four, five, eight different options. And then lastly, how do you delegate decisions to other people to protect yourself and protect your time and your energy and that, that willpower and that mental energy that you need to make more critical decisions? Uh, some people have what they assistants or gatekeepers that decide whether that person is going to get on their calendar or not. That's a way to protect your decision making as well. You don't have to decide it. Someone else has been instructed what's a yes and what's a no, and they make that decision. So you can delegate decisions to other people so that you can focus on the most important decisions. So that's what I have for you today. Be aware and look at ways that you can reduce decision fatigue so you can focus on the most important decisions that need to be made today and every day. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is the Priority Report.